I'm Haley. I gotta say, I am just about to burst with excitement. <laughs> it's that time of year. You know, presents are being wrapped, people are singing songs on the street corner, everyone around me is so jolly. It's the one time of year I can even get away with using the word jolly. I don't have to tell you what time of year it is. Christmas is celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. You see, it's all about celebrating. And one of the ways I like to celebrate is by decorating. There's only one thing missing. Hmm. Yee! Yay! They say the Christmas lights are bright at Christmas, at Christmas. Oh my, um, <laughs> Whoa, well, this is a mess. <laughs> How did this happen? The lights were untangled when I put them in the box last year. Are they moving around in there? Oh, I'll never be able to untangle all of this. This is impossible. Uh, well, suddenly, I don't feel like celebrating anymore. Isn't it strange how sometimes you feel like celebrating and then something happens that makes celebrating impossible? Well, in today's story, you'll see how there's always some reason to celebrate, even when things seem impossible. Hey, maybe I could use these lights the way they are. Yeah, yeah. E earrings, earrings, maybe? Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let her receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing.
The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 1. Zechariah and Elizabeth lived in the hill country of Judah. Both Zechariah and Elizabeth came from the family line of priests. But while many priests made a big show of their work just to impress other people, Zechariah and Elizabeth actually loved and served God. Dear God, help us to follow your commands in all we say and do. And please, please give us a child. Through many long years, Zechariah and Elizabeth had been unable to have children. Bless their hearts. They must have done something wrong for God to let this happen. But God wasn't punishing Zechariah and Elizabeth. In fact, one year Zechariah got an amazing opportunity. His group of priests gathered about twice a year in Jerusalem to serve God in the temple. Zechariah, you've been chosen. Me? <gasps> to go inside the holy place? Each year, one priest was selected to enter the temple and burn incense before God. Now with 1,000 priests in this group, this could have been a once in a lifetime opportunity. Wow. Okay, I'm ready. As the other priests waited outside, praying to the Lord, Zechariah entered the beautiful holy place of the temple. Carefully, from a golden censer, he spread incense over glowing coals on the altar. The fragrance filled the air like the prayers of the priests outside. There, all done. But as Zechariah turned to go, bright light blazed up on the right side of the altar. Oh, a dazzling angel towered over the altar. Zechariah stumbled back. Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Oh, uh, thank you. Which prayer? Your wife, Elizabeth, will have a child. A child? Zechariah struggled to think clearly. It will be a boy, and you must call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you. His birth will make many people very glad. He will be important in the sight of the Lord and filled with the Holy Spirit. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will prepare the way for the Lord. That's... Uh, but, but, but Elizabeth... Uh, how can I be sure of this? Oh, we're both old enough to be great-grandparents. The light burned even brighter and Zechariah shielded his eyes. I am Gabriel. I serve God. I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now, you will have to be silent. You will not be able to speak until after John is born. That's because you did not believe my words. They will come true at the time God has chosen. Zechariah tried to respond, but no sound came from his lips. These words will come true at the time God has chosen. The light flared and then dimmed. Zechariah found himself alone again. Stunned, he staggered out of the temple. There you are. What took so long? Zechariah opened his mouth, but still no words came out. Uh, didn't catch that. Zechariah gestured wildly, attempting to explain. Oh, charades. I love charades. Um, mouth, duck lips, open, shut. Oh, 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 you can't talk. Why not? Something tall, wings, um, ostrich, flamingo. Aha, angel. You saw an angel. Although he couldn't speak, Zechariah finished his time of service and returned home. And in a short time, Elizabeth found out that she would indeed have a child. The Lord has done this. He has been kind to me. At last, the time came for Elizabeth to have her baby. Well, bless your heart if he don't have quite the pair of lungs. He's beautiful. Just look at that head of hair. Eight days after the baby was born, friends and relatives gathered for his naming. 
His name will be Zachariah, of course. No, oh, after his daddy. No, he must be called John. John? Honey, nobody in your family has that name. It ain't right. Everyone turned to Zechariah. Zechariah, that boy needs a proper name. Still unable to speak, Zechariah gestured. Oh, 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 charades again. Hold on. A uh, stick, a uh, carrot, a. Uh, ooh, he needs something to write with. As soon as Zechariah had a tablet and quill in hand, he wrote quickly. What does that say? I can't see. His name is John. Well, bless my heart if Zachariah ain't talking again. <laughs> Praise God. His name is John. John, you like that, don't you, little one? Everyone was filled with fear and wonder as the news spread through the hill country. It was clear the Lord was with John. What is that child gonna be? So what seemed impossible had become possible. God had given Zechariah and Elizabeth a child in their old age. God had taken away Zechariah's speech and then returned it. And then, when John grew older, he would play a very important role in introducing his cousin to the world, Jesus. As I was thinking about today's story, an idea occurred to me. One thing I can celebrate today. So Zechariah and Elizabeth were too old to have children. It was impossible, but God made it happen. They had John who would grow up to introduce his cousin, Jesus, to the world. Nothing is impossible for God. He can do anything. Here's why that's worth celebrating. There are things in our lives that seem impossible could be a tough subject at school, could be a problem you're having at home, or a disagreement you're having with a friend. Your problem could be so bad, you think you'll never be able to untangle it. But if God is able to give life, then he's able to give you knowledge and wisdom to get through that tough subject in school. If God is powerful enough to control the weather, then he's powerful enough to help you weather any storms that come your way. And if God can bring peace to the whole world through the sacrifice of his son, then he can bring peace to your life and in your relationships. God can do anything. So here's the one thing to remember today. Celebrate because God can do anything. I'm not sure if God will physically come down here and do something about my uh, problem, but if he can create the universe from nothing, then I believe that he can give me the patience, determination, and creativity I need to untangle these lights. Hmm. And that makes me want to celebrate. Yay! Merry Christmas! <sighs> Here goes. See you next time.